Wishpond does landing pages, pop-ups, and even email marketing. But is it the right tool for you to base your entire business on? Well, in this video, I'll help you decide. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dave from Profitable Tools, where I review software to help you grow your business. Today, we're looking at a special lifetime offer for Wishpond over at AppSumo. You can see this starts at 49 bucks, but I'll tell you right out of the gates, you don't even want to consider this deal unless you're willing to invest the maximum, which is a triple stack at $147. Now, here is why. You might be thinking, you know, oh, my business is so large. Of course, I could only get by with 50,000 leads. No, that's not what I mean. Of course, I'm talking about white labeling. Now, I have never been so strict about white labeling. The white labeling on this deal is absolutely essential. If we go over to, this is a WordPress website. I've used this demo site on many videos. Here is the branding built with this little panda bear wish pond. Now, you might think, ah, that's not that big a deal. Oh, check that out. It's got a hover color. It's a button. If someone goes to click your submit button and they click here, they're going to go over to the Wish Pond website. This is the most aggressive branding I've ever seen on any deal. And here's one of the main problems is that Wish Pond is not just a provider of pop-ups. They actually offer done for you services. So if you're a digital marketing agency using Wish Pond and you don't get the white labeling feature, well, you're going to end up possibly sending people over to a competitor. Let's check it out. Here is the Wish Pond monthly pricing, which you can kind of compare what we're getting with AppSumo quickly here. You can see it's a really good deal. 10,000 leads is normally $300 a month. Scroll down a little bit further and it says, need a hand implementing your marketing strategy? That's right. They actually offer marketing services. Obviously that's not included in the AppSumo deal, but that is the huge red flag that makes me say, I will not use this tool unless I can get the white labeling. Even calling this white labeling is a little bit strange because typically white labeling involves replacing the existing brand with your own, calling it your own service. But here we're just talking about removing their branding from all of your emails, your forms, your uh, contests. That's all going to have this wish pond branding unless you stack three codes. All right, let's get back to the contacts here. So 10,000 leads, 25,000 leads, and 50,000 leads. I'm going to replace that word for you. Instead of calling them leads, call them what I just said, contacts. That'll help you understand what is, this deal is all about. So essentially, this has email marketing built into it. Now, you can certainly integrate it with another email marketing application if you don't want to leave your contacts on the platform. But that's why they're calling them leads because they have all of these uh, marketing tools like forms, pop-ups to gather information from people. And then you can either use Wishpond to interact with them directly via email or you can export them and use whatever application you might already be using. So let's go ahead and check this out. The first feature they talk about is unlimited landing pages. This is included on every single tier of the plan here. Let's jump over to what they call Wish Pond Central. This is basically our dashboard where we can see all of our campaigns. And to create a new template uh, right up here at the top, we can do a landing page. Here are the templates. Now I will say right out of the gates, I might sound like I'm coming in a little hot, little negative on this one, but there's a lot of things that kind of bother me. And the designs here really stand out as being kind of subpar. Uh, the, the page builder is not great either, which we'll get into in a minute. I've We've had how many times we've seen page builders where it's just like, uh, you know, doing a page builder is really hard. Now, Wishpond does have a new page builder coming. Let's go ahead and check out a template here. Um, let's choose, oh, I don't know, how about this one right here? So here's the template. It's not all bad. I mean, this isn't the ugliest landing page I've ever seen, but if you compare it to something like Unbounce, which is constantly upgrading and maximizing their landing page for conversions, you're definitely gonna feel like you're kind of going on the cheap route getting something like Wishpond. Here's a few other landing pages from Unbounce. You can see that they're just much more stylish. They don't have large images in the background. That's kind of, that's a dated look I was talking about. So here is uh, a template that does have an image in it. In fact, here's, there's another one down there below, but you can see that it's off to the side, right? It's not competing with the text. Whereas with our Wishpond design, 
it is right over the image. In fact, almost every template seems to have the most interesting part of the image. In this case, it's the people and they're clearly engaged with something, but then the headline is conflicting with it and you can't really see, it just ends up being a little bit irritating. If we switch out to a different template, you're gonna see that almost all of them have this same basic conversion rate optimization flaw. So I swapped out the template here and this is another one of their designs. You can see it's again, right over the person's face. Uh, just definitely not a super pro looking design. Another interesting thing I noticed that they did is the text right here, it's not actually a headline, right? It's not like an H1 that a web browser will pick up and be able to read and understand the overall structure of the page. It's just really large text. It's 437 pixels. There's no way to signify what's an H1 versus an H2. Maybe there is somewhere, but I don't see it anywhere that's you know very obvious to me. We can, of course, have mobile responsiveness. That would definitely be a deal breaker if it wasn't built in. So here is desktop view, moving over to tablet view, and then finally switching over to the phone view. Now, I noticed on some of the templates, like this even right here, the headline should get smaller for the phone view, right? And some of them were even having uh, line break issues where the, the text is going over, overflowing into the next line. They just didn't really seem to take much time to optimize this for mobile. So in my opinion, you know, there's no reason you'd have this one word kind of hanging down here. Uh, now, obviously you're probably gonna be replacing this copy, but you'd want to change the size of this text. So to edit the text, I have to click on it once and then click edit text. And that opens up the builder right here where I can go ahead and change the different font size. Uh, and you know what, if I actually select this to make sure it's changing the right text, you can see that, oh, just changing the, the text there, that looks a lot better. You definitely would want to have that all on a single line, but even just changing the text takes an awful lot of clicks. One really nice feature that it does have, gotta give them credit, is A-B testing. You can click right here, create an A-B test, and then it basically just duplicates your existing page. You can go ahead and make a modification of it and you'll have variations. You can go ahead and add as many variations as you like here. You can see you can duplicate the current variation or delete this variation. I'll go ahead and do that for now. And let's talk about publishing. So let's go ahead and hit the publish button here. And you can see that this link is now live. I can copy it here and then of course just uh, enter it in my web browser. It's not a very pretty link. Now I can get a C name with my plan. However, you only get one. So if you're thinking you're going to use this on limited landing pages for unlimited clients, well, you're going to be running traffic to really ugly looking domains or a C name that you have to find something maybe that's kind of generic and your clients probably won't like that. Once again, I wanted to point out that we've got the built with wish pond icon down here. Definitely a deal breaker and hovers on the website as well. All right, let's talk about the next three basically all in one. We'll talk about the social contest, the pop-ups, and the online forms. Now, all of this content can be embedded on another website, so that's probably how you're gonna wanna use it. Contests are under bonus entry sweepstakes. That's what we're looking at here. We can hit create. Here are the contest templates. These are gonna be very similar to most online contests that you've seen before. So again, a lot of these designs suffer from that same problem of we've got a very interesting image, but it's very bright and vibrant, and it really doesn't draw our eyes to the focus point here, which is obviously entering the contest and, you know, filling out the options that they want us to to help promote our product or service. They do have a really nice seven or eight minute video on how you should actually set up the contest. So I won't go into that here. I'll just refer you to check out the Wish Pond YouTube channel to get further details on that. But as we go to publish this, you can see here are our publishing options. You can again, use that Wish Pond URL, just like we saw in the previous option. You can use the custom domain. You get one per account. You can add this to your Facebook page. However, you do need to have at least 2000 likes on your Facebook page for this to actually get connected. So I can't demonstrate that for you here. Or you can do what most people are probably gonna do, which is the embed code. So I'll go ahead and select this. And then you'll simply copy and paste this onto your website. I'm in the back end of WordPress here. I'm just gonna go ahead and create my contest. In the Gutenberg editor, I'll go ahead and add some HTML. Go ahead and hit publish here. So here we go. This is what the page looks like upon loading. You can see that the full page loads. Of course, it does have that branding there because I have not unlocked the third code. More on that in a little bit. But uh, that's basically what this template looks like when you embed it on a WordPress page. Remember this form from the beginning of the video? Well, this is actually just embedded with a similar embed code on the page. However, there is a WordPress plugin for Wishpond and you can see actually they have several. This is a little bit bewildering actually and they all have very low to no reviews at all. So they have a landing page builder, they have the forms builder, pop-ups builder, a sliding pop-ups builder, an opt-in top bar builder. Uh, there are just 
a, a bunch of different wish pond. Here's their contest. Uh, so I think the idea was that if you wanted to embed one of their apps or one of their, their campaigns on your website, you'd install the corresponding plugin and then you'd link up via their WordPress API. So they have a token right here. You can uh, click on that. It'll unveil your token. And then you simply paste that into their plugin. I actually try to do this. And when you enter the uh, token into, into settings, then you go to the dashboard here to log in. I'll, only nothing happens. So I'll go ahead and hit login here and you see it just reloads the page. So the WordPress plugins seem completely broken and that actually explains the really low ratings on the WordPress repository. So for now, it looks like you're gonna be stuck with just using those embed codes. So let's talk about the dashboard a little bit here. My gripes are gonna continue. I feel like I'm coming in kind of hot on this one, but it really has so many holes in my mind. So here is the dashboard where we can see all of the marketing campaigns we've created. Through testing this, I made a bunch of them as you can see here. However, it's kind of hard to find the one that you're looking for. And I could envision myself using this and just kind of ending up with a giant mess. Nothing gets organized by default. Like if I wanted to find all my landing pages, there's no real easy way to do that. They have these filters but I can really just kind of turn off some, but not all. So all of my lead capture campaigns, which include uh, landing pages, contests, pop-ups, forms, and calls to action, those are all in this same checkbox, which seems a little funny to me. They could solve this problem very easily by just adding some tabs to filter things out. Now, I'm sure there's someone out there watching this saying, yeah, but you're missing the point. They have folders. You can organize things by folders, and that is true. I've got some folders set up here to play around with the functionality. I've got one set up for emails right here, and then I've got just a general campaigns one down here. Now, the idea is that once you create a campaign, you can move it into a folder it can correspond to maybe a particular client or if you're going to you know have all of your emails grouped together that would make sense to put them in a folder however it's very very tedious to actually use this folders function because you can't just drag and drop it in i mean that would be nice it seems like it should work so let's say i wanted to move this form right here down to the campaigns folder what i actually have to do is go over to the three dots click on move to folder click up here to use the campaigns folder and then go down here and click move to folder what was that about five clicks uh it's too many i'll tell you that much and if you have 20 or 30 campaigns it's gonna eat up too much time it's just too tedious right they need to have a better solution for sorting and organizing campaigns on the dashboard let's talk integrations we'll go over here to my name and click on integrations now you can get data out of wishpond via zapier pysync and segment no integramat integration and they didn't even seem to know what that was in the apps email comments so i wouldn't hold your breath on that one it does integrate with other email marketing tools so if you don't want to use the automation features of wishpond you can certainly pair that up with something like an active campaign uh, they have constant contact as well as MailChimp. Uh, you know, missing some big ones in my mind, uh, like ConvertKit. You don't see that here. There's a noticeable absence of the LTDs we're familiar with over on this channel. No SendFox, no MooSend, no Sendy. Uh, you know, other ones that are important to me are like Klaviyo. You don't see that here. Uh, so definitely lots of room to grow on the email integrations. Syncs up with quite a few CRMs. We've got Base CRM, which is actually now Zendesk Cell. You can see they haven't updated the, the logo here. But you get Salesforce, Pipedrive, uh, uh, base. Those are some really popular ones. Uh, Zoho, of course, is always popular as well. We've got a couple webinar integrations here. Click webinar and go to webinar. And then you can also connect this up to uh, Slack and even Twilio so you can send out SMS via your marketing automation. They do have a brand new Shopify integration. Now, I think that is the only integration they've added in the last three years, which is why you don't see a lot of the LTD platforms on here. Overall, this is kind of giving me the feeling that this platform hasn't been worked on in several years and this AppSumo deal might kind of be a way to get them back into the game. All right, last but not least, let's look at the email automations here. These are included at every plan. However, once you get to the three codes, you'll be able to add in the drip sequences. Now, why am I not showing you the drip sequences or the white labeling? Well, that's because I did buy three codes, but I bought them too recently. I sent them into support and then you don't really hear back. There's actually several reviews at the bottom of the AppSumo page here having the same issue where they're just not getting the support that they expect to see from Wishpond. They're sending in their codes and there are some comments back from Wishpond saying, you know, uh, we're working on it. We're going to, uh, you know, get these codes redeemed as fast as possible. But it's kind of a red flag to me that we're counting on marketing automation from a company that is manually going in and redeeming codes. It just doesn't seem to add up. So here are the six different types 
aspects of marketing automation campaigns. We do what they call a standard workflow. Uh, let's go ahead and click on that. So here is the workflow screen and this is essentially how it works. We have a trigger up here, which they're calling a condition and then an action that gets taken. So as an example, maybe someone joins my list by uh, entering my contest, right? They enter my contest, they get added to my list and then I want to send them an email. I can click send email as the action down here and then choose the email that I want to go out. There are actually kind of presets that we can work from. Let's go back here to the main dashboard. We'll go ahead and choose the email automation option again. And let's go ahead and choose, how about cart abandonment? So the idea here would be someone visits your website, goes to your cart page, but then doesn't buy, well, you can send them a cart abandonment message. Now there's a lot of factors going on here. First of all, how are you gonna know that they're on your website? And uh, how are you going to email them? Well, there is a tracking code that you can embed on your website, and that's how you know when someone hits your cart page. And let's take a look at the conditions here. So they're saying, has viewed the cart, and they have not confirmed, they've not gone through the checkout page. So really what this is doing is they're going to a page that has the word cart in it at least once, and they have not gone to a page that says confirmed. So you want to make sure that your checkout pages say cart and confirmed, you know, yet maybe it says, thank you. It doesn't say confirmed. You'd want to update that in this campaign. And then what you do is you'd send an action, right? So you delay for one hour and then you'd choose an email that you want to send to them. Now for this to work, of course, you're going to have to have their email address. So they'll have to have filled out a form somewhere on your website so that you know which contact is roaming around in your website to these different pages. To get that tracking code that we've been talking about, all you do is click up on your name and go down to Wishpond tracking code. You'll get the tracking code. You can copy and paste onto your website and they even have a little checker here to make sure that it's been installed correctly. But if you've ever set up something like a Facebook tracking pixel or a Google tracking pixel, it's going to be the same process. So my feelings about Wishpond can kind of be summarized by this quote from the TV show, The Good Place. Now in the show, he's talking talking about frozen yogurt and how people ruin ice cream so that they can simply have more of something. And the quote is, there's something so human about taking something great and ruining it a little so you can have more of it. Well, I feel very similar about Wishpond in that, yes, it's really, really cheap and it does a lot of things. However, it doesn't really do anything outstandingly. And, you know, we can get really great landing pages if we just invest a little bit of time in something like Elementor or a little bit of money in something like Unbounce. We can have really great marketing automation if we invest a little bit of time in something like Modic or really great marketing automation if we invest a little bit of money in something like Active Campaign. I think you get where I'm going here. We could continue down the line with pop-ups, it, it have everything in one solution, you're just not going to get the best quality results. So think about whether you're the type of business owner that has more money than time or you're the type of business owner that has more time than money. That should kind of guide you with where you want to go with your purchases. In my opinion, it's probably not going to be for Wishpond unless you are the rare entrepreneur that has very little time and very little money. Well, then this is probably going to be it for you. But I think most of us will be better off with other options. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 6.4 out of 10. That's going to do it for this review. If you want to find out more about Wishpond, you can click the link in the description. That is, of course, our referral link for this channel. So if you click on it and make a purchase, we see a small commission, although it doesn't cost you anything extra. Hey, head over to the Facebook page. The link will be in the description. We're talking about business tools all day long, 24-7. Love to have you join the conversation. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about this Wishpond deal. I will do my best to answer them, and I'll see you in the next review.